All right, factoring polynomials. Probably my favorite thing of this whole year because I can teach you how to factor, teach you, teach you how to factor. Uh, the first step when looking at polynomials, specifically when looking at these trinomials and figuring out which verse to use for the Teach Me How to Factor song, uh, the key is to look at the last number, okay? So in this first example, the last number is 15, okay? And we actually don't care about the 15 so much as we care about this sign in front of the 15, okay? Since this is a minus sign, that means that we have three terms with a minus at the end. So we're following the rules from the verse in the song with a minus at the end. We always set up two sets and we always put an X in each. When we have a minus at the end, the signs will be different where they go. That depends. So we have to figure out what our numbers are before we can figure out what our signs are going to be. Remember, to figure out what numbers to put in the parentheses, on the ends of the parentheses, we have to first look at the factors of 15, this last number that I said was so important. So I know that the factors of 15 are 1 and 15, because 1 times 15 equals 15. Now, 2 doesn't have anything that multiplies with it to be 15, but 3 does. 3 times 5 is 15. 4 like 2 will not work, so we actually, then we're back at 5, so we've got them all right here with these four numbers. Now, I look at these pairs of numbers, and I figure out which pair is going to get me to the number I have in the middle. Well, the number in the middle of this problem is a 2. So, 1 and 15, or 3 and 5, I'm asking myself, which one's going to get me a 2? Well, the only way I can get a 2 is by the 3 and the 5, because I could do 5 minus 3 and get 2. So those are the numbers I'm going to use. I'll put a 3, and I'll put a 5 up in my parentheses. So now we're going back to the song. If you got three terms and a minus at the end, the signs will be different where they go. That depends. The larger of your numbers gets the sign from the middle. Here's the sign from the middle, and so it's a minus, and that goes with my larger number in this case, which is 5. So I put a minus sign with the 5, and since the signs will be different, I know that this can't also be a minus. It has to be a plus. So my final answer in factored form looks like this. I'll just rewrite it to make it look nice. It's x plus 3 times x minus 5. Now, if you're not sure, which you might not be if you think you mixed up the verses, then it's okay to check. In fact, I would suggest that you do that. To check to make sure that this is right, we just foil it out. We multiply the binomials. We do x times x, and we get x squared. We do x times negative 5, and we get negative 5x. 3 times x is positive 3x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. When we combine our middle terms, we get negative 5 plus 3. Well, that's negative 2x. Carry down the x squared. Carry down the minus 15. And we have, right here, what we started with up here. Since they match, we know that we did it correctly. And we know that this is the right answer. Go ahead and check your answers on every problem. It's a wise move. Uh, let's move on. The second trinomial, we again focus on the last part of the problem. We have a minus at the end again, so it's going to be similar to the problem we just did. This time we have to factor the 12. So the factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 5 times nothing, and then um, well, then we're back at 4 already, so we're done. So we've got all six factors of 12 here. I'm going to set up my problem with my two sets of parentheses, and I'm going to put an x and put an x like I always do. Now I've got to figure out, well, which numbers am I going to use? Remember, I'm trying to get my middle number. In this case, I don't really have a number here because it's invisible, so remember that all the invisible numbers are always 1. So how do I get a 1? Well, 4 minus 3 would give me 1. So I know that those are the numbers I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and just put them in here, the 4 and the 3. doesn't matter which one goes where. 
If you got three terms and a minus at the end, the signs will be different where they go. That depends. The larger of your numbers gets the sign from the middle. Plus is the sign in the middle, so that is going to go with the four. And since they have to be different, that will make this one a minus. Again, just to double check, I'm going to do this real quick. X times X is X squared. X times negative 3 is negative 3X. 4 times X is positive 4. X. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Now you'll notice that the X squared already matches and the minus 12 at the end already matches. So really all I have to do is make sure that my like terms combine to be plus 1X. Well minus 3X plus 4X is actually positive 1X. So it does match. So I do know that this is the correct answer for this problem. Let's move on to the other two problems. Here we have a trinomial, again, but this one's a little bit different because when I look at my last number in front of it, this time I have a plus sign, which means now my signs will match. So I'm going to set up two sets, put an X in both. The sign from the middle will be showing up the most. Before I even come up with the numbers, I know that the sign in the middle is going to show up both times, a minus and a minus. And again, that is because this one has a plus in the back. The signs will double up like a Wendy's double stack. Now I go ahead and find the factors of the last number, 21, just like I did before. It's 1 times 21, 2 doesn't work, 3 times 7, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, 6 doesn't work, and then I'm back at 7. So this is all we are working with here. Whoops, let me erase that just to be clear. So, um, which numbers are going to give me that number from the middle? Which numbers are going to get me a 10? Well, in this case, 3 plus 7 gives you 10. So those are the numbers I'm going to use. I put a 3 in one parenthesis and a 7 in the other. It doesn't matter which one goes where, since the signs are the same in both. And then I'm done. I just want to double check it. x times x is x squared. X times negative 7 is negative 7X. Negative 3 times X is negative 3X. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. The positive 21 already matches. The X squared already matches. All I have to check is combining my like terms. Negative 7X minus 3X is negative 10X, which matches what I have in the middle. So we know that this answer, X minus 3 times X minus 7, is in fact correct. The last problem is the most different. It's not a trinomial anymore. This is called a difference of squares. So difference of squares follow some pretty simple rules. Um, you just have to keep track and memorize them. You still get two sets and you still put an X in both. Now, for difference of squares, the first rule that you have to remember is that you always use different signs. That means that you're always going to use one plus and one minus. They'll never be both plus or both minus, always different. So you can put those in right away. And then the second rule is to find the numbers that go in there, you need to square root the last number. So in this case we have 49. Well the square root of 49 is equal to 7. So I put a 7 in both of these. And the answer for this one is x plus 7 times x minus 7. And that is how you factor polynomials.